Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Matt's uh, budget garage here. Um, <laughs> it is a crisp Monday morning at about 5.45 a.m. I uh, wasn't planning on doing this work today, but uh, woke up early. Honestly, couldn't get back to sleep. Figured might as well use three hours before my workout to try to bust out something on the to-do list. So that being said, kind of a big, important mod here. Um, I've had an OMP bucket seat in my uh, driver's side for well over a year now, um, and it's really clutch on track. So what I'm going to do is put a race quip uh, fixed bucket seat in the passenger seat. Uh, this is about the widest uh, racing seat I could find. Figured it'd be nice uh, just to have something with a lot more space for anybody and everybody who wants to ride in the car with me. It was fun at the drift event. Uh, like I got to have random people kind of ride with me and they seem to enjoy it. But the, the stock OEM seat just isn't cutting it for keeping people held in place. Plus I've subjected my fiance um, to the G forces of this car for long enough without any kind of supportive seat. So this is going in the car today. I have a, a planted seat bracket um, specific to this car and, and specific to the passenger side, as well as two, uh, eBay China special side mounts. Um, they look like, I mean, they're made of steel. They're, they're tough looking. Um, maybe not as pretty as the planted mounts are, but they saved me like 80 bucks. So we'll see how they work. If, uh, if they don't work that well, I'll sell them and buy the planted. So, um, anyway, I've got all that to do to mount the seat. And then I also have Oh, that way, my crow uh, six point harness that I need to install. I'm gonna work on the seat first, get the seat kind of figured out where I want it, and then I'm gonna cut the back plastic and then take everything out of the car and uh, um, you know get the harness situated on the harness bar. But the harness bar is hidden in, in these cars. Uh, it's underneath all the back plastic in kind of behind the seat. So I have to take all that out before I can actually get to it. It's early. I, I probably got like six hours of sleep last night, but whatever. I've got my Alani energy drink and we're ready to go. <laughs> Love these things. First thing that needs to happen here is passenger seat needs to be taken out of the car. So I don't know if I need to, but just in case, I think I'm gonna unplug the battery. Just make sure we don't have any sort of airbag issues. Now that we have the battery unplugged, there are four bolts um, you can kind of see that one down there. Uh, I believe they're each 14 millimeter. As you can see, I got all four bolts uh, out to mount the seat in there, but I forgot about this little guy holding the uh, seat belt to the actual seat. So I am going to get rid of that one and then we'll be good to go. Apparently I hadn't taken the seats out in a while because I forgot about all three of these connectors. I'm sure I'm going to have a million lights on the dash after this, but it is what it is. The lights are already on because of the driver's seat and I don't really care. So um, now that we've got room to play with here and apparently a bunch of random trash. I probably ought to vacuum this before putting the seat back in. <laughs> but uh, let's keep going with the, uh, the seat bracket here. See how everything is gonna kind of fit together. I don't know what this is. Eye drops, apparently I have eye drops in my car. So I'm just gonna roughly mock up how this seat's gonna go on using the side mounts and the bottom mount um, and just try to get kind of an idea of how I want it to be in the car before I actually start bolting everything together. It's looking more and more like I'll probably have to drill a hole or two in this mount. Um, I just noticed that these mounting Whole, like brackets they don't perfectly line up with any of the with any of the holes front and rear um, they do in kind of in this inside one with very front here and very back there the issue with that though is this is a very wide seat so we'll see if I have to drill holes it's like not the end of the world but I'm gonna try to get things kind of situated the way they'll be before I decide that Right now, essentially what I'm doing is getting a rough mock-up. I want the seat to have a little bit of a rearward angle, um, so you'll kind of be sitting back into it a little more. Uh, partially for, like, headroom, and then partially just because I think that feels better, typically. 
Um, so that's just personal preference. We'll see what passengers like, and I can always change it later. But that's why I have the front one on the very top, and then the back one in the middle. I don't. I actually do have room to put this all the way down, but I don't want a crazy lean back. So, so everybody's riding like a G, and so, some short people might not be able to see out of the car that way. Okay, just for a frame of reference, I took out the uh, the driver's side seat as well, just to, to kind of remember how we did this. Um, it's interesting. There's definitely places I'm gonna need, it, it, it looks like I'm gonna probably need to drill holes, which is fine. Um, I was just sort of hoping I didn't, ha I wouldn't have to, but I think that's just kind of how these things go. So that's the way it's gonna be. After looking at the bottom of the seat and seeing where all the different holes line up for mounting, it appears that I'm going to have to drill. Um, unfortunately, right down here just doesn't perfectly line up anywhere. Um, so I think, I mean, I don't have to drill a lot. I just have to get it like a little bit hollowed out. It kind of sucks that I can't just place it perfectly. But after my second test fitting, I've noticed something with like room in the car um i actually it looks like i have to get the seat to cockeye a little bit like this so the so they're actually going to be facing like slightly outward like with their feet towards so when they're sitting instead of being straight on like this they're going to be sitting slightly to the right in order to get the big wide shoulder winglet to clear the door um but that's okay because i actually think that's going to help me um, cause this was, this was straight on and I was having trouble getting enough clearance for this back bolt here, um, to actually get them in. So what I'm thinking is if I cock it that way slightly, it's going to help me get more room to actually get this, this left bolt to mount the seat to. And actually it looks like I'm, it might finally line up one of these holes down here. So let me show you guys what that looks like. It's gonna be probably some more trial and error, but we'll see. After a bunch of in and out of the car, over and over again, adjusting things, I finally have the seat base where I think I want it, and I'm gonna drill one hole. Luckily, I only need to drill one single hole to get the, the, the final fourth mounting bolt through, um, and we should be good to go to actually get the seat fitted in the car. I will have more to do uh, after that for the harness placement, but for now, um, let me show you the drilling aspect and show you how I have it mounted in the car. Okay, that should be the final hole. Uh, now let's uh, get it dry fit and start working on the harness brackets. Here we are with the seat kind of dry fit in the car. None of the bolts are actually in yet to you know to, to mount it. It's free moving, but as you can see, it's kind of it's a little cockeyed. Um, that was the only way I could get this uh, outer wing kind of area to even come close to fitting inside the door. It still touches, as you can see, but. It's not excessive. The one on the other side barely touches a little bit too, and that's been fine. Um, but as you can see, the seat is huge. It's like cavernous. Um, perfect to fit all kinds of people in the car. Uh, what I am gonna do is try to get the whole thing to sit maybe an inch lower. I'll have to kind of play with the side mount holes, but otherwise it's pretty much ready. Okay, as you can see, I got some hardware out that I've had laying around for seat stuff for a while. Um, got the, the like uh, crotch belt sorted out just had to kind of test fit in the car sit in it see where it lined up and then adjust these as a, as needed it was pretty simple but not worth filming because you know that just would have been filler no one would really wants to watch that so yeah got those in got everything mostly rough mounted uh, next step will be to drill a couple holes in the actual car i think i'll need to drill one down here like so i can show you that see that one is for the lap belt and then the interesting thing about this car, um, on the driver's side, the, the factory seat belt mounting location is actually already there and you can screw it directly into that. 
um, but on this side, that is not the case. So I'll probably have to drill a hole here too. I just need to maybe talk to someone and figure out exactly where. Um, I'll look under the car and see, you know, where in here I can drill the hole and just thread it through. Interesting to note, uh, at least on the NC1s, um, to get this, the factory seat belt to like connect back down there, um, since you're not putting the original seat in that this normally mounts to, you have to mount it uh, down into the car. And furthermore, one thing that's also worth showing um, on the, uh, oh, where's the eyelet? Here it is. So with the harness, um, they come supplied with two of these little eyelets. Uh, let me see if I can focus a little better. It comes with two of those, um, so one per side for the lap belt. And uh, on this passenger side, outside portion, it doesn't look like there's a hole for this to thread in like there is on the driver's side over there. But um, that's just because this is a left-hand drive car and there is a hole, you can see right here, um, right here. Uh, and it, it, it's perfectly threaded for these eyelets. Uh, but the issue is that they keep it plugged with this little, or, or not plugged, but capped off um, and covered with the carpet since, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's for right-hand drive versions of this car in Europe um, and I guess J Japan, things like that. So uh, you just got to pull back the carpet, uncover the hole, and then you'll be able to thread this through. I just cut a little, a little slit in the carpet and it goes right through. Um, I'll show you that mounted up here in just a little bit. Best way to turn these once they get pretty tight, I found, is just put a screwdriver through and keep just turning it in until it gets really tight. Because this is obviously something you don't want to sway around. So I'm going to get it as tight as I possibly can, basically. Okay, now that we've got this eyelet in correctly and really very tight, won't move anywhere. This, la this next part uh, kind of sucks a little bit. You do have to drill into the car itself. Um, I will show you guys kind of a template because I have done it obviously on this side. It's for this uh, inside lap bolt to go. And obviously you can see, I essentially just have to mimic that on this side, which essentially equates to drilling in about right here. It goes through kind of the trans tunnel. Okay, kind of a big update here. Um, got this eyelet in. Drilled a hole for this one. Um, actually, I drilled three holes because <laughs> I screwed up the first two, um, which sucks, but whatever. It's a track car, so that's going to be my justification. Just don't ever look underneath my car. Uh, so, yeah, we got the eyelet in the correct place. Um, I'm going to spray the back side of it all with uh, Rust Oleum a little later after everything dries. I had to use some JB Weld to fill those holes. Uh, next, I'm mimicking the uh, driver's side for uh, the harness bar. So the harness bar is encased in all this plastic, as you can see, it's right there. I already got one harness in. Um, I just gotta get the second one in. If you wanna see a good video showing how to actually put the harnesses on and, and make sure they're tight, uh, check out Kevin Vo's video. He did like a really good write up on how to do that. Not really write up, but like he explains it and I'm actually using that as a template for doing it myself. So um, yeah, I'm gonna get this other harness in. I had to cut out this hole with a, like a straight razor or razor blade or whatever to get it out. And then um, I'll show you the finished product here in a minute. Now that I have the harness all taken care of, I've got the rear or like the shoulder belts in. I've got the lap belts connected where they're supposed to go. Uh, the last thing to do is to put the seat in and see how everything fits. So we're gonna do that and uh, we'll kind of do some finishing thoughts afterwards. Those of you planning to do this, get yourself a massively long extension. Trust me, it will help you so much. So I had to pull the seat back out again. I realized I was kind of a, a dumb dink and uh, I didn't like hook in the, the seatbelt wire 
Uh, so just did that. I had to go to the hardware store and get a, a nut that would fit on the end of that. But uh, I'm gonna hook that to the seat, actually on the wrong side here, it's just so I can plug this in, and that'll make it so I don't get a seatbelt warning on the dash all the time. But obviously with the harnesses, we're not even gonna use the factory seatbelt anymore. I'm just leaving it in there in case we ever wanna return to sock or something, which probably won't happen, but whatever. I also noticed after sitting in the seat for the first time, um, I'm gonna try to lean it back a little further. I'm gonna go from, from the middle one up to the top one and see if that helps. The seat just, you sit bolt upright in it a little more than I would like, but I'm not sure if I have, if, if the seat will actually rotate anymore because of the clearance of these bolts back here. Uh, we'll find out here in a second though. Awesome, so I was able to get the seat to tilt back more. Uh, as, as you can see, I went probably half an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch up, which is gonna lean the back, you know, maybe half, three quarter back. So I think that's gonna feel a lot better in the car. I will update you after I sit in it. That is a wrap on the seat install. Let's take a look at it so I can show you guys a little more about kind of how the fitment turned out and what the seats like to sit in. Uh, but otherwise, like we're done. I've got six point harness in here, all buttoned up, looking nice. The seat itself is massive, as you can tell, compared to my OMP Champ R, which is made for like really, really small people. Um, Again, I to be fair, I don't really fit perfectly in that seat, but this seat is like cavernous. It's just huge. Um, I feel like probably 300 plus pound people could fit in this thing. Uh, but, you know, we'll see. I have a lot of time to kind of check, check fitment, see if all my friends want to ride along with me. Um, it, it, I think it's going to be a lot better for any passenger riding in this car now just because they're going to have this aggressive side bolstering to hold them in plus on track anyway um, if i want to have any kind of real instruction i need to have fixed bucket racing seats on both sides because uh, instructors aren't typically okay with the lack of safety for them compared to the driver so yeah we're in here um it sits really well here let me let me kind of have a seat in here and show you so I'm really glad I managed to get it leaned back as far as I did. Uh, it it kind of matches the lean of this seat now. Uh, the top of it is taller than the other seat, I noticed. And, and it feels like, because of the way the seat's designed, this uh, rearward lean um, makes it just more of a steep angle for the back of it, even though, to me, the seat sits similar to that one, if that makes any sense. But uh, the back of the seat does barely touch my roll bar. Maybe not ideal, but it works just fine. And this thing, like I said, I have room to move in here. And I'm about uh, 5'10 and like 220. Um, so I feel like people of some pretty large stature can fit in the seat, which is exactly what I wanted. I wanted just people to, to both have support and to not be like super cramped like I am all the time in that seat. Uh, I've learned to live with it and it's a very comfortable seating position for me, even for long distance, but most people don't like how tight it squeezes them. So this should be a good like middle ground um, b between like comfort and just good solid like support. I hope this helped a little bit. Uh, it was a very kind of tedious process. I, took, I probably took the, the seat in and out like 20 times before I kind of finally got it where I wanted it. Uh, one thing to note that with this uh, largest race quip fixed bucket seat, uh, to get it in an NC Miata, at least with the mounts, I, I used the planted uh, bottom mount and then the kind of eBay special side mounts. Uh, you really do have to angle the seat. I, I'm like, you can't really tell with me sitting here, but I'm at a pretty, probably like a, maybe a five degree outward angle it doesn't feel uncomfortable in the seat but it is a little odd looking <laughs> doesn't really matter that much but just so you guys know if you want to run this seat it's pretty wide it was hard to get it to fit right without uh without this side kind of wing hitting the door and even still with the door closed it does hit it's just not like crazy like um if i tried to get it in straight that wing would have been well past the plastic and might have even touched the window so uh, that wasn't going to work, but the way I have it in here does work really well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Peace out and stay shifty.